The birds, the beasts, and the bats. The birds and the beasts declared war against each other. No compromise was possible. So they went at it tooth and claw. It is said the quarrel grew out of the persecution the race of geese suffered at the teeth of the fox family. The beasts, too, had cause for fight. The eagle was constantly pouncing on the hare and the owl dined daily on mice. It was a terrible battle. Many a hare and many a mouse died. Chickens and geese fell by the score, and the victor always stopped for a feast. Now, the bat family had not openly joined either side. They were a very politic race. So when they saw the birds getting the better of it, they fought with the birds. But when the tide of battle turned, they immediately sided with the beasts. When the battle was over, the conduct of the bats was discussed at the peace conference. Such deceit was unpardonable, and the birds and the beasts made common cause to drive out the bats. And since then, the bat family hides in dark towers and deserted ruins, flying out only in the night. The Fox and the Monkey Once upon a time, the animals in a forest decided to elect a new ruler. At the meeting of the animals, the monkey who was present there was asked to dance. This he did so well with a thousand funny capers and grimaces. The animals were carried entirely off their feet with enthusiasm. And then and there, elected him their king. The fox did not vote for the monkey, and was much disgusted with the animals for electing so unworthy a ruler. One day, he found a trap with a bit of meat in it. The fox then got an idea, hurrying to King Monkey. He told him he had found a rich treasure, which he had not touched because it belonged by right to His Majesty the Monkey. The greedy monkey followed the fox to the trap. As soon as he saw the meat, he grasped eagerly for it only to find himself held fast in the trap. The fox stood off and laughed. You pretend to be our king, he said, and you cannot even take care of yourself. The animals realized that a true leader proves himself by his qualities. Soon another election among the animals was held, and they appointed the lion as their king. The Mercury and the Woodman A poor woodman was cutting down a tree near the edge of a deep pool in the forest. It was late in the day, and the woodman was tired. He had been working since sunrise, and his strokes were not so sure as they had been early that morning. Thus it happened that the axe slipped and flew out of his hands into the pool. The woodman was in despair. The axe was all he possessed with which to make a living and he didn't have enough money to buy a new one. 
As he stood wringing his hands and weeping, the god Mercury suddenly appeared and asked what the trouble was. The woodman told him what had happened, and straight away the kind Mercury dived into the pool. When he came up again, he held a wonderful golden axe. Is this your axe? Mercury asked the woodman. No, answered the honest woodman, that is not my axe. Mercury laid the golden axe on the bank and sprang back into the pool. This time he brought up an axe of silver. Is this your axe? Mercury asked the woodman. But the woodman declared again that his axe was just an ordinary one with a wooden handle. Mercury dived down for the third time. And when he came up again, he had the very axe that had been lost. The poor woodman was very glad that his axe had been found and could not thank the kind god enough. Mercury was greatly pleased with the woodman's honesty. I admire your honesty, he said, and as a reward you may have all three axes, the gold and the silver, as well as your own. The happy woodman returned to his home with his treasures, and soon the story of his good fortune was known to everybody in the village. Now there were several woodmen in the village who believed that they could easily win the same good fortune. They hurried out into the woods, one here, one there, and hiding their axes in the bushes, pretended they had lost them. Then they wept and wailed and called on Mercury to help them. And indeed, Mercury did appear, first to this one, then to that. To each one he showed an axe of gold, and each one eagerly claimed it to be the one he had lost. But Mercury did not give them the golden axe. Instead, he gave them each a hard whack over the head with it and sent them home. One moonlight evening, as Master Fox was taking his usual stroll in the woods, he saw a number of pheasants perched quite out of his reach on a limb of a tall old tree. The fox was very cunning, and he got an idea to get the pheasants. The sly fox soon found a bright patch of moonlight, where the pheasants could see him clearly. Then he raised himself up on his hind legs and began a wild dance. First he whirled round and round like a top. Then he hopped up and down, cutting all sorts of strange capers. The pheasants stared giddily. They hardly dared blink for fear of losing him out of their sight a single instant. Now the fox made as if to climb a tree. Now he fell over and lay still, playing dead. And the next instant he was hopping on all fours, his back in the air and his bushy tail shaking so that it seemed to throw out silver sparks in the moonlight. By this time, the poor bird's heads were in a whirl. And when the fox began his performance all over again, so dazed did they become that they lost their hold on the limb and fell down one by one to the fox. Remember this, too much attention to danger may cause us to fall victims to it. The Tortoise and the Ducks The tortoise, you know, carries his house on his back. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot leave home. They say that Jupiter punished him so. Because he was such a lazy stay-at-home, that he would not go to Jupiter's wedding, even when especially invited. After many years, Tortoise began to wish he had gone to that wedding. 
When he saw how gaily the birds flew about and how the hare and the chipmunk and all the other animals ran nimbly by, always eager to see everything there was to be seen, the tortoise felt very sad and discontented. He wanted to see the world too. And there he was with a house on his back and little short legs that could hardly drag him along. One day, he met a pair of ducks and told them all his trouble. We can help you to see the world, said the ducks. Take hold of this stick with your teeth and we will carry you far up in the air where you can see the whole countryside. But remember, you should keep quiet or you will be sorry. The tortoise was very glad indeed. He seized the stick firmly with his teeth the two ducks took hold of it, one at each end, and away they sailed up toward the clouds. Just then a crow flew by. He was very much astonished at the strange sight and cried, This must surely be the king of tortoises. Why, certainly, began the tortoise. But as he opened his mouth to say these foolish words, he lost his hold on the stick, and down he fell to the ground where he fell among rocks. Foolish curiosity and vanity often lead to misfortune. The Wolf and the House Dog There once was a wolf who got very little to eat because the dogs of the village were so wide awake and watchful. He was really nothing but skin and bones and it made him very downhearted to think of it. One night, this wolf happened to fall in with a fine, fat house dog who had wandered a little too far from home. The wolf would gladly have eaten him then and there, but the house dog looked strong enough to leave his marks should he try it. So the wolf spoke very humbly to the dog, complimenting him on his fine appearance. You can be as well fed as I am if you want to, replied the dog. Leave the woods, there you live miserably. Why, you have to fight hard for every bite you get. Follow my example and you will get along beautifully. What must I do? asked the wolf. Hardly anything, answered the house dog. Chase people who carry canes, bark at beggars, and fawn on the people of the house. In return, you will get tidbits of every kind, chicken bones, choice bits of meat, sugar, cake, and much more beside, not to speak of kind words and caresses. The wolf had such a beautiful vision of his coming happiness that he almost wept. But just then he noticed that the hair on the dog's neck was worn and the skin was chafed. What is that on your neck? Nothing at all, replied the dog. What? Nothing? Oh, just a trifle. But please, tell me. Perhaps you see the mark of the collar to which my chain is fastened. What? A chain? cried the wolf. Don't you go wherever you please? Not always, but what's the difference? replied the dog. All the difference in the world. I don't care a rap for your feasts, and I wouldn't take all the tender young lambs in the world at that price. And away ran the wolf to the woods. Remember this, children. Freedom is everything. Hi, friends. Did you have a lot of fun with the videos? Do you want more? Subscribe to our channel to have more fun with me. Click here to continue watching more such beautiful sing-song rhymes. Thank you.